Okay, guys, we'll go ahead and get started as it is now officially 3.30. So thank you so much for taking time out of your day and joining us. Um, I'm Kelsey Foster, so I work in our southeastern schools in Pennsylvania. And also on the phone, we have Lauren Salter. Lauren, do you want to introduce yourself real fast? Hi, everyone. Uh, so my name is Lauren, as Kelsey had mentioned. So I cover southeast or south central and southwestern Pennsylvania. Uh, this will be my my second year on so folks i've worked with before we've kind of we learned together last year and very excited to, to work again with everyone again this year awesome thank you uh, so just as a quick reminder this is a recorded webinar and we will share this out with everyone after so you will have access to this information and also uh, we have everyone muted please stay muted just to eliminate any background noise and also, if you have any questions throughout, we do have a chat box. And if you go ahead and open that up so you can kind of put your questions in there. And that is how we will do the Q&A at the end of this. Uh, so just make sure that you're utilizing that as well since everyone is muted. Uh, just another quick thing, I am a little under the weather, so if my voice cracks or whatever throughout this, sorry about that. But other than that, we're ready to get going. Okay, so this is our Unified Champion School team. Uh, as you see, we are growing rather rapidly, and because of that, we have lots of staff to help. Uh, so people not on this call, we have Jen Trust, who is in charge of our Erie School, Cameron, Clearfield Center, Bradford, and Tioga. Uh, you will know Jen if you've been on this program for a while. Uh, she was uh, kind of the sports coordinator for all of Unified Champion Schools before we grew so much. Um, and then in Philadelphia, we have Mike Jordan, and he does everything for all of our schools in Philly. And then, as most people know, Mike Bovino is also part of our team. He does school recruitment. And then we have Michelle Boone, who is our SOPA staff lead. And SOPA is just Special Fix Pennsylvania for those that aren't used to our lingo. So we have even more support this year, which is absolutely amazing. So if you didn't work with one of us, this is probably one of your liaisons. So we have Amanda Breed and Jillian Stringfellow out in Slippery Rock University. Uh, they do Mercer, Butler, and Lawrence schools. Out in Pittsburgh, we have Peggy Feldman. And Dawson, Perry, and Cumberland, we have Shannon and Jan. And then up in the northeast part of the state, we have Pete Chivak. Hopefully everyone knows their liaison at this point in time, but just in case, there's that information for you there. And all, as always, if you want to reach out to any of us, you certainly can. Uh, this is just your direct contact for the schools. And as I said, it's a lot of us. Here's all of our emails. Once again, hopefully you all know your liaison's email at this point in time. Uh, but if you ever feel the need to reach out to any of us, there you go. So we're just going to do a quick overview of the three components of Unified Champion Schools. Uh, everyone seems to know Unified Sports. It's our strongest component by far. That's our interscholastic Unified Sports. So we do Unified Bocce in winter, and we do Unified Track and Field in spring. But we have two other components that are also very important and crucial to our Unified Champion School system. The so first one being whole school engagements, and we'll touch on whole school engagements a little later on in this. But whole school engagements are really just any sort of activity that hopefully the Unified Club is leading that really helps to transform school climate and engage the student body on Unified Champion schools and just working on treating everyone equally and supporting diversity. And then the third pillar is inclusive youth leadership. So with inclusive youth leadership, that is really providing all students the opportunity to be leaders in their school that might not usually get that opportunity. And also under this pillar, we have our youth summits. So something new this year is we now have a youth leadership newsletter. Hopefully everyone saw it. It was sent out last week, but I had not all the emails were updated for the new contacts this year. So if you didn't get it this time, uh, hopefully you'll get it next month, and we'll work on the liaisons to get all that information. So this will be sent out monthly, and we're going to really use it to kind of communicate with you on becoming just a statewide situation. 
I feel like a lot of times schools know what's happening in their school and maybe their district, but maybe not much outside of that. And this is statewide and even nationwide. So we really just want to be able to bring you news of other cool things schools are doing across the state. In this newsletter, we are looking to highlight unified pairs, so it's just students with or without disabilities. So if you have a that you would like to be highlighted, that would, you would you think should be highlighted in this newsletter, please send that information and a picture to your liaison, and we can get it in the newsletter for you. And same thing when it comes to events. If your school has done something really cool that you want to share statewide, Please, please, please send that to us. We want to be able to make sure that we are highlighting you and appreciating everything that you do the best way that we can. So please send that to your liaison so it can be in our newsletter. So as most of us know by now, the beginning of the school year typically means youth summits. So this year our youth summits will be in October. We have seven youth summits this year in October, and we'll have one more in the spring. And then the next slide has a little bit more about that. So what is the goal of Youth Summits? Our goal is to bring together students with and without intellectual disabilities for leadership training and bring students together across schools too. We try to keep it fun, interactive, and energetic. We want participants to improve their leadership, communication, and organizational skills. And really, this, the whole point of this training is to give students the tools they need to go back to their unified clubs and and really start to make a difference. So, and we also try to do a good little teaching on just working with other groups in the schools. So we really encourage working with other school teams, other clubs, as it, you really have to work with more people to really change that school climate. So with Youth Summits, schools bring a group of five. In this group of five, you'll have two special education students, two general education students, and one faculty liaison. And it's very important that you bring the right students to this youth summit that will really benefit from this training. So we really want to see the leaders of your school. So if they have enthusiasm or already serve as leaders of their unified club, that's who you should be bringing. Uh, so we are looking for truly the, the best of the best of your unified club or your unified team if you're working on your unified club build up. Um, it's also important that they have good communication skills and are willing to express themselves as we do a lot of fun activities, which can be sometimes seen as embarrassing for high school students. So if they're kind of very timid, they probably wouldn't be the best person to bring for this youth summit either. We really need those students that want to dive into these activities and kind of going along with that, just making sure that the people you bring work well with others and are team players. And once again, our youth summits are just basically, first and foremost, a leadership training for those strong, strong students that you know that can go back to your school and really make a difference. As I said, we have a ton of youth summits happening this year, um, mostly uh, in, all in October. So we're kicking things off at North Penn High School on the southeast side of the state on October 11th. And we're kind of going all the way through the month of October, ending at Central High School for our Central Youth Summit on the 30th. And once again, if you're in that Bradford Tioga area, you will have your youth summit in the spring. Uh, it's just kind of maxed out with all of ours at currently. But this is a requirement for Unified Champion Schools. Uh, so please make sure that you are getting this approved for transportation as it's coming up very, very soon. And also at these youth summits, we do provide lunch and everyone gets a t-shirt. We will do our best to get the sizes provided for you. I know this is sometimes an issue. Um, so we can't 100% promise that the kids will all get their exact t-shirt they want, but we promise that everyone will have a t-shirt. So next we're going to do a quick site walkthrough. So we have obviously specialbixpa.org. I'm going to click on it over here and let's show you our wonderful website. And we have a ton of information on here. So not only do we have information on our local programs, we have also information for our Unified Champion Schools. So if you go to More Than Sports, Unified Champion Schools, go ahead and click on that. We have all this wonderful information here. Uh, but I really want to show you guys the Resources tab. So as you know, we do need some reporting for our Unified Clubs. 
And if at any time you want to do some reporting for us before we send it out, it's all right here for you. So you never really need us to send it. It's all right here. Also, for resources, we have all of our youth leadership toolkit kind of broken out for you. And once again, it's all right here. If you ever need any help with your unified club, everything is right here for you. And I will show you a quick example. Let's do, let's see what's this one. And it's right here. It's just a quick little one pager on some things to do with your for your polar plunge. And we have a whole bunch more resources on that as well. But just wanted to make sure everyone was aware of this. And also on this website, uh, we can help you find a program. So as many of you know, we do a lot more outside of high schools. We have all of these programs and they all offer sports outside of high school. So if you have athletes that are about to graduate and they want to stay involved and for whatever reason, we haven't given you that information, which hopefully we have. It's all right here for you to go to as well. Okay, and with that, I'm going to pass it over to Lauren for Cool Schools. All right, thanks, Kels. Uh, so we're going to go a little bit over the, the polar plunge. It's an awesome opportunity for your schools to raise some money uh, and do something super fun in, in the meantime with it. Uh, so Kelsey actually clicked on the little uh, information tab there on the website so that that works out well so you, there's a little little tab there that that gives you a little bit more background uh, but the polar plunge is exactly what it sounds like if you're brand new to this is that your school works together raises some money for you all to go run and jump in some cold water uh, to raise money for Special Olympics. So benefits are it's one of, it can count as one of your whole school engagement opportunities and it's also a fundraising opportunity for your school and it's just super fun. Uh, it's an opportunity to engage your entire school be behind something um, that's a little out of the ordinary. It's, it's not something that you do every day. Um, so when are the plunges? We're going to click through the site here in a second and go over when are the plunges? Because there are a number of them throughout the state. Uh, and there is a website that we're going to click through that will actually uh, go through on how exactly to register. Uh, I'll put a little challenge up to all of you. So last year, um, the school that raised the most was Satterton High School, and they raised $20,000. That's a lot of money. They, they did an amazing job. So I, I challenge any and every school out there that we have within our program to, to beat that mark. So that's the mark to, to go for y'all. Uh, but here's the site. So Kelsey, thanks for clicking on this. So you're gonna go to plungepa.org. And so you can scroll down through here and it's gonna give you a little bit of background of what the plunge is, what it means to plunge. Uh, and then our different locations. So if you're in Eastern Central or Western Pennsylvania, uh, you can click on the appropriate one. And if you scroll down there, it's going to give you all this information. So this one is for the Philly Plunge. And if you look on the, oh, click back. There you go, that's perfect, Kels, sorry. Uh, this will give you all the information for the cool schools. So we set out a specific time for the schools that are participating in the plunges to have their own plunge time. Uh, so we also plug in a little uh, learning opportunity within those plunges, have some activities for the schools that are participating. Um, so for this year, uh, the, the plunge in Philly, we have that plunge time between 9 and 12 and gives you the background of, of the, the plunge itself and then also the schools that have attended this. Uh, so how you register, big old click here button. And it's, it really just walks you straight through this process. So you would go ahead and hit register and it will set you up with your team. So there's another way to go ahead and do that. Thanks, Kels. So click on register. You're going to create a team and you're gonna go ahead and put your school name in there along with whatever your fundraising goal is um, and just a little tagline to go in there. Uh, so after you create that team, it creates a fundraising page for your team and you'll be able to see the different teams that are created um, and be able to have that little rivalry of seeing how much 
money every team has has made. Um, so remember that that tag of Satterton had hit that 20k mark last year. I know there's somebody that can beat them this year. And just one quick note here uh, for our cool schools, we don't require you to put any money down to create a team. So if at any point it's telling you that you owe money when you create a team, that means you have not done the cool schools specific registration. So that is one way to kind of safeguard. We don't ask for money up front when creating teams for our schools. Thanks for that, Kels. Turn it back over to you, Kels, to go through some clubs. Okay. So we're just going to quickly talk about unified clubs. I know this is still causes a bit of confusion in our schools, so I just want to really talk about it just real fast. So we really want these unified clubs to be co-led, meaning we have co-presidents and all sorts of other leadership positions that are co-led. All this means is that we people with and without disabilities leading this club. And um, these clubs should really be planning all your whole school engagements, such as the fans in the stands, spread the word inclusion, all that fun stuff. And we really need them to be meeting year round. When it comes to reporting, we need things such as numbers. Numbers is really the big thing we need for our grant reporting. But we also want to know what your whole school engagements are. <laughs> so just some quick tips here. If you're creating a club, uh, as you know, it's most important to find these students that will really take charge. <laughs> um, and really your biggest thing your first year is just going to be recruiting. So figuring out the right students to go to, which sometimes are obviously on the unified team because they're normally going to be students that are pretty passionate, but they don't have to be. And once your club is up and running, really just having that initial, like, what are our goals for the year? What do we want to do? Um, hold elections for that co-leadership cool style and just really making sure that everyone's voices is heard. Uh, I have a lot of schools ask me if they can work with existing clubs. So you don't always have to start a club from scratch. So a lot of you already have types of clubs in your school that are unified and it's completely fine for you to kind of tweak those clubs a little bit and have them be your unified clubs. So some examples of this are best buddies, anti-bullying clubs. I've seen it in student council and I've seen it with athlete leadership clubs. Once again, we just really want to see that co-leadership. So we want to be able to see people with and without disabilities leading this club and making decisions and really the whole goal of our unified clubs. So as long as you incorporate what we want to see, you're totally fine to use these pre-existing clubs. And once again, the goal of all of these clubs is always to create a better school environment, first and foremost. Uh, so I will say just a quick note, I work with a lot of schools with Best Buddies. We love Best Buddies. Uh, just make sure that some of those activities are really more focused on that school environment, school climate piece. So they're really educational. We love a, a good school dance. Everyone loves a good school dance, but in order for that to be considered a whole school engagement, it does need a little bit more of an educational component. So how are we reaching out to the rest of the school to really teach them about acceptance and inclusion? So really keep that in mind if you're trying to make all these activities work for your whole school engagements. So here's just a couple types of whole school engagements. So fans in the stands is simply just talking of really filling the stands for your host match for your unified teams. So we really want it to be packed. We want to see all these students cheering on for our teams, for bocce and for track, which can be sometimes a challenge, especially if people don't know what bocce is. Spread the word inclusion is another huge one that we really want all of our schools to be doing. We'll talk a bit more about that in a second. Other common ones are pep rallies and unified sports experiences. And just a quick note on unified sports experiences, this is really almost like a unified field day. And it can be also a really good recruitment piece. So it's really just getting people to come out and try unified sports for the first time. So it could be setting up a bocce court outside the cafeteria outside and just get people to come out and try it. With that, I'm going to pass it over to Lauren for a little quick note on spread the word inclusion. Thanks, Kelsey. Uh, so we touched on whole school engagements and gone in depth about it. One of them that could that is mandatory for us is spread the word, uh, formerly known as spread the word to end the word. We have moved into their new campaign of spread the word inclusion. Uh, so that's their new tagline. 
Uh, so instead of spread the word to end the word, spread the word inclusion is the way of the future uh, that we are going into. Uh, so if you want to click on the next slide for me. So just a minor change in this, the whole uh, messaging is, is truly the same. It's not just spread the word to end the word, but how, what does inclusion mean to each individual? So when a student is taking the pledge this year, it is, how are you including folks? Uh, is it for, for friendship and it's for acceptance? Uh, how do you include folks of different types of folks throughout the entire school building? So it makes them think just a, a little bit more of that inclusion and acceptance piece of that. Uh, so uh, going on to the next slide there, Again, this year we will be doing ordering through AMPRO. Uh, so for the folks that are brand new, we want you to do the Spread the Word Inclusion campaign and we will give you some monies to do that. So we will be sending out codes. Each school gets their own very specific code and that code works like a gift card. We give you $150 credit to go on to our website through AMPRO and order all your swag materials. Um, you've got an option to go ahead and make your own shirts. Uh, we've got stickers and water bottles. And if you go ahead and click on that link there, Kels, there's just a, a ton of fun stuff that you can use. And each school's a little bit different of what they think uh, students will gravitate towards. But we've got the, the wristbands and we've got our, uh, like a package deal that for one click type ordering will give you for that $150 uh, stickers and t-shirts and a whole bunch of everything all in one shot there. So we had a number of schools last year that didn't take advantage of this um, and you're not saving us money by doing that. So when we get our grant to be able to provide you these monies, we dedicate all that money to give you for this, like a section of that money. Uh, so please, when you get that, that link, go ahead and, and please utilize it. We want you to spend that money. Uh, if you want to spend more money, you absolutely can. Uh, anything above that 150 uh, is going to be at your cost, uh, but we definitely encourage you to get whatever you think you need for that uh, to be successful. So we wanted to touch just a little bit on our Unified Sports, which is one of our, our major components. We really wanted to focus on uh, our other components today, but just want to touch on a couple of things as they're coming up here to, to just keep in mind. Uh, so we want to talk a little bit about uh, maximum roster size. So just as um, a reminder that our roster size for bocce, and you can have a max, each school can have a maximum of two teams and eight individuals on each of those teams. So a max of 16. Uh, for track and field, you can have upwards to a 40 max. Um, that is the very max, uh, and you definitely need to have more than just a couple of coaches with athletes, athlete numbers like that, okay? Um, for each of our sports, we will be hosting mandatory preseason webinars, uh, and we will send out those dates and links uh, when it's appropriate for them to get started. So. Uh, each sport will have a webinar to go over uh, any rule changes, uh, expectations for the year. Uh, every school should have somebody on each of those webinars if you have one of those sports. And so we also have some opportunities uh, for additional students that are interested. You are more than welcome to set up some intramural teams. These are operated separately from your uh, unified team. Okay. Uh, and then also unified clubs. So go ahead and engage them in your unified clubs. You can do something recreationally um, that is separate from your team, but we definitely want to have them engaged. And those are two ways that you can engage those other students to, to be involved. Recruitment, it's such a big thing. Uh, so when you create a team, you're also not just creating a, a team of your students, but you're also going to need a team of teachers and staff uh, to help in promoting your sport. Um, so think of it as like your, your unified sales force. You're going to need folks from the special education department. You're going to need folks from the phys ed department. Think of all these different folks that can help you recruit a, a number of individuals. So you're not just targeting 
those varsity athletes and then a group of special education students. You really want to touch those students that may not participate in a varsity sport otherwise, and this is their opportunity to do so uh, and engage in a sport in a meaningful way. But we do have some recruitment strategies. Uh, we do have some flyers and posters that we do send out for you to use. You're more than welcome to make your own. Um, never forget the whole each one reach one. Word of mouth can definitely uh, pass along the word quite quickly and, and get you some folks. Um, and then engaging those popular teachers within the building. Uh, get them on your side and have them do some recruiting for you as well. Speak with faculty advisors, different clubs. Um, utilize those communication tools of morning announcements, flyers, emails, letters, um, websites. If you can think of it, it's a good strategy to use. Um, and we, we utilize all of these and have, have seen some, some good success there. So before we say thank you though, sorry Kels, um, just want to give you guys a heads up, a uh, quick note on cool schools. Um, so we will be sending the 2019 cool schools toolkits out the first week of October. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. And it's going to include our marketing materials, email, social media templates, and some customizable flyers that you can all utilize in your fundraising efforts. And another thing to look out for is we are sending back like little welcome back packages to all of our schools. They will either be coming in the mail or delivered by one of your liaisons. So please be on the lookout for that. We have some goodies for the Unified Champion School team and also some the Youth Leadership News Guide. And if you're a bocce school, we have the, a resource guide for bocce in there as well. Uh, with that, uh, thank you guys so much for giving us some of your time today. We will start our question and answer to it right now. Uh, so once again, we're going to utilize that chat box. So I'm going to stop. If you don't have any questions, feel free to leave. And thank you so much for your time today. I do have a question here. It's what is the date for Spread the Word Inclusion? Uh, so this year we do have a date. It's going to be in March. I believe the official date is like March 6th, I believe. Uh, but once again, you do not have to have your Spread the Word Inclusion on that specific date. It truly can be any time. Uh, but that's when our national headquarters do most of their promotion. Uh, we have another question on bocce rosters, and we keep them small just because that is the way bocce is most successful. Uh, so actually in our traditional bocce teams, we have teams of two. So we've already really maxed out with a team of eight for our school teams, which is why we really encourage schools to start setting up intramural leagues within their schools and then really having that travel work best for everyone else. Um, and once again, you always have to make sure that that ratio is in check. So that 50-50 ratio we really need of general education students and special education students. And for schools that do really succeed and have bigger rosters, that's really when we would want them to start track as we can have the 40 participants in that. And yes, I will be sending out this to everyone and I can also send out the link to this presentation. Okay, looks like we're about wrapping up here. Uh, once again, if you think of any more questions, um, oh, I do have one more question. Uh, in field recruitment and signups begin. So really any time. So we actually won't officially start practices until I think March, is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's right. Uh, but I mean, honestly, be talking to school, to students now if they wanna be in track and field. Uh, Cause it's recruiting today even, uh, just know that they won't be practicing until later, but especially if you're in school or if you really struggled with getting participants last year, be talking now. It's never too early. Okay. 
Okay. Thank you so much, guys. If you have any additional questions, please email one of your liaisons. We are always here for you. And with that, have a wonderful afternoon.